Hi, it's great to see you again. Well, a couple of weeks ago, I asked if you would like to do a Q&A session with me. And to my delight and surprise, you guys asked a lot of questions. So thank you for those questions. And today, I'm going to try to answer them. Now, one of the questions that came in uh, asked how Mr. Fox and I met. And in all honesty, I think Mr. Fox should participate in that answer. So I'm going to try to talk him into doing a video with me, okay? So now, let's see. First question today is from Jay Elsner, who asked, if you could have a dinner party with any four historical figures, dead or alive, of your choice, which four would you choose and why? Well, I think I'd invite two couples who both enjoy good food and are great conversationalists. Uh, and they are Barack and Michelle Obama and Julia and Paul Child. And if I could invite a fifth guest, it would be you, Jay Elsner. All right, next question is from Donna Bigley, do you ever feel like not cooking and get takeout? You are amazing, all the things you do. Oh, thank you so much, Donna. Uh, yeah, there are times when I don't feel like cooking, but then I consider the takeout options in my immediate area, and I usually end up cooking anyway. Now, that's not to say that Mr. Fox and I never go out to dinner. Uh, there are a few really good restaurants about 15 miles from here. So we do eat at one of those establishments probably once each week. Okay. Next question is from Donna Sparkle. Where do you get your energy? Any tips? I have enthusiasm, but feel I slog along at a tenth, if that, of the pace. I hear you, Donna. Um, I had a lot of natural energy when I was younger. And then as I got older, of course, my energy waned. And about eight months ago, I felt really tired all the time. So what I did was start exercising. Um, I started getting up like 4.30 in the morning so that I could have an exercise session and still be able to do all of the other things I wanted to do during the day. But now I do a workout routine every morning, seven mornings a week. The sessions are 30 minutes long, five days a week. And then twice a week, uh, a trainer comes to the house and I work out with him for a full hour. And let me tell you, the workouts are grueling. And honestly, I hate every minute of working out. But, you know, when it's over, you know, I find that I have a good deal of energy for the rest of the day. Uh, now, that's not to say that I am a health fanatic. Uh, I'm not. I eat cake, I eat cookies, I have an occasional gin martini. But uh, I, um, Donna, I don't know if the exercise will work for you, but it worked for me. Okay, next question is from Duke Clayton, who wants to know, when deciding on a recipe to share, do you practice a few times before filming? Oh, absolutely, I do. I, you know, I will make a dish at least three times before I film it. And the reason I do that is because I want to make sure that the dish works out for you in the same way that it works out for me. And lately, you know, because I have a lot of viewers in the UK, uh, I've started weighing the food. So that's yet another step in, in presenting a recipe. Now, making the same dish multiple times, weighing out ingredients is certainly time consuming. It's also very expensive. 
But again, I want to make sure that the recipe works out for you. Okay. Next question uh, is from Chris. When did you discover you had an affinity for cooking? From as early as I can remember, I've, I've always been fascinated by food and w with the preparation of food. And of course, I've always enjoyed eating food. Um, I'm a little bit science-minded, so I found it fascinating that you could take ingredients, put them together, and you'd end up with something that bore absolutely no resemblance to any of those ingredients. For instance, you can take flour, water, yeast, and salt, and turn them into a gorgeous loaf of bread. I mean, how incredible is that? All right, next. This is from uh, Judy Holman. When did you first start cooking and what was the thing you made? Um, I must have been about eight years old. Uh, and my mother, who was a, and still is, a formidable cook and a master bread baker, fortunately, you know, she did not discourage my kitchen curiosity. And the first recipe she had me do was something called dream cake. And I remember it like it was yesterday. So it involved this powdered, you know, chemical lace stuff called Dream Whip. It was a, you know, fake whip topping. Um, <clears throat> and uh, as I, I recall, the cake was absolutely delicious, although it had dubious ingredients. But then this was like the late 1960s, and we did eat a lot of dubious ingredients back then. Okay. Oh, and I should probably mention that I think one of the reasons my mother actually encouraged me to cook uh, was because I would be able to make breakfast for the family. And when I made breakfast for the family, she was allowed to sleep in. So it was a win-win situation for her and for me. Okay, next. This is from Amy Jackson. Do you ever eat junk food? If so, what's your poison? Hmm. Well, I don't know if you would call it junk food, but you guys, I have a real affinity for onion rings. I'm talking about onion rings that are thickly battered and deep fried in oil. I, I just love them, okay? And I try not to eat them very often. All right. Uh, this is from Susan. Do you have any pets besides a dog? Yes. We have a cat named Binky. Now, I found Binky in my backyard. She was this tiny, tiny little kitten, although she was probably two months old. Um, she was malnourished. That's why she was so small. And she was near death. I mean, she couldn't move, and that's why she let me pick her up and bring her to the vet. Uh, the vet didn't think she was going to survive, but I fed, I bottle fed Binky every two hours for two weeks. I mean, I set an alarm clock at night so I could get up every two hours to bottle feed Binky. And it worked. She gained both strength and weight. And she's a very happy, grown-up cat today. And she and my dog, Avery, are great pals. We love both Avery and Binky. Um, let's see. Uh, oh, and if you want to see a couple of videos of Binky when I first rescued her, uh, just go to my YouTube homepage and type in the name Binky. That's B. I-N-K-Y, and the videos will pop right up. I hope you'll watch. Okay, 
Next question is from Christine Ferrino. I hope I'm saying her last name correctly. Do you still love your new kitchen? Well, I don't know if you would call it love, but I certainly do like the new kitchen. The only regret I have is that I chose all white cabinets. There's really too much white in the kitchen. Um, so I've been toying with the idea of painting the cabinet smoky green. Now, smoky green uh, was a popular color in the Victorian era, so I think it would look appropriate in this nearly 200-year-old house. I also think the color would look good on camera. So we shall see. We shall see if I have the energy to paint those cabinets. All right. Um, this is from Lisa Brady. What is the most challenging recipe you have ever prepared? Well, if by challenging you mean involved, then I would have to say it is Dory Greenspan's recipe for figgy pudding. Now, her recipe calls for, I don't know, 25, maybe 30 ingredients. I made it only once, about 10 years ago. Um, now, a lot of those ingredients had to be chopped up and then soaked in dark rum. And then you would pour the pudding, which is really a cake, um, and you'd pour the batter into a ring mold, and then you had to put the ring mold on top of a terry cloth towel in a large stock pot. And then you'd add some water and then you would steam the pudding. So it was a very involved recipe, but let me tell you, that pudding was almost supernaturally delicious. If you'd like me to make the recipe around Christmas time, just leave me a comment below. It would be a very long recipe, okay? Um, I mean, it would be a very long video. So maybe you don't want me to film it. Um, okay, this is from Nancy Miller. Where did you grow up? And did the locale or your family influence your eclectic palate and flair for cooking? Well, I spent the first 18 years of my life in Spokane, Washington. Uh, now Spokane, at least back then, was hardly a food mecca. Uh, but my best friend's mother was from France, and she introduced me to the food I still love today. I mean, she introduced me to leeks and leek and potato soup and crepes and this dessert called oeuf à la neige, which translates to eggs in snow. Uh, let me know if you want me to make that French dessert for you. It really is spectacular. All right, next question is, let's see, I have it over here. Hold on a moment. Um, this is from Janet Week or, or Weick. I, I'm not sure how to pronounce your last name, Janet. Please forgive me. Have you had advanced training on the piano, or are you just a natural talent? Um, I, I probably have some natural talent with the piano, um, but I did train uh, to be a concert pianist, and I, I trained for fifth, at, at least 15 years. Uh, my teacher in Spokane, Washington, uh, is named Ivan Kovacevic, and under her tutelage, I won a lot of awards. I mean, she had me in piano competitions. And then when I moved to New York City, I studied for about a decade with a master teacher named Herman Diaz. Now, Mr. Diaz was a student of Claudio Arau, who in turn was a student of Martin Krauss, who in turn was a student of Franz Liszt. So that's a very interesting musical lineage. Okay, let me see if I can find another question here. Um, oh, uh, this is from Betty Vorley. 
Do you have help maintaining your beautiful home and gardens? I can't imagine doing it all, LOL. Well, I did do it all for many, many, many years. I maintained the house and I maintained all of the gardens I designed for it. And it wasn't until fairly recently that I finally did get some help, but that help only comes once a week for a few hours, so I still do most of the upkeep myself. And let's see if there's anything else I can answer here. Um, uh, oh, this one from Diane Rowe Woodley. Hi, Kevin. In one of your videos, you mentioned that you used to be a rock musician. Would you kindly show us a video of you performing? That would be so cool. Thanks for taking questions from your followers. Okay, yeah. Uh, besides classical piano, uh, I was also in punk bands, several punk bands in New York City. Now, we performed... Uh, well, one of the bands, it was called Children's Playground, uh, performed seven times at a club called CBGB's. Um, that was during the 1980s and before the, cell, the, before the iPhone was invented. So, unfortunately, I don't have any videos to share with you. I have cassette tapes of our music, but I don't even know where they are. They're here somewhere but I don't even have a tape recorder on which to play them. So, well, I think that's enough questions for today. I want to thank you so much for asking the questions, and I'll try to get to the other questions you ask in a future Q&A session. And if you've thought of some new questions to ask me, then by all means, post them in the comments below. Thank you so much for watching. I hope you have a great week. All right, bye for now.